So guys, first in the component list are three pieces of 13009 power transistors. Next is one piece of CTC1351 power transistor. Third comes the universal boards, just one piece. Fourth comes an aluminium sheet with a thickness of around 1.25 mm for mounting of all the transistors and the remaining circuit. Fifth, some heatsink compound. And sixth is going to be some MC for making the transistor robust. And finally, the seventh one is going to be four screws and bolts, some copper wire with thick strands and some nickel strips. So guys, next comes your universal boards. Take one piece out of the pack with the help of the paper cutter. The piece I'm using is 2 by 8 centimeter. Now comes choosing the length of the universal board according to the width of the aluminium sheet and then cutting it accordingly as shown. Next, take all the power transistors and bend their terminals exactly to 90 degrees as shown. After that, take the transistors and dip their legs in the flux. Now, place their legs in the slots of the universal boards as shown and keep a gap of at least two slots for each transistor. After that, cut off the extra length of the legs of the power transistors. Now, carefully solder all the legs of the power transistor to the universal board slots and make sure that you do not short circuit any of the legs. So guys, now comes the part of making the bus bars on the universal board for the common collector and common emitter terminals. Now take the nickel strip and place it on the left bus bar. After that, heat it with the soldering iron on the soldered slots so that the solder beneath the strips melts and sticks the strips to the slots. The strip can be reused from the initial strip by cutting it into two equal halves and using it for the second bus bar. Now do the same thing to the right hand side bus bar as well. So guys finally this one is going to be your collector bus bar common for all the collectors of the transistors and this one is going to be your emitter bus bar common emitter for all the transistors. After that guys take a 1.5 mm red colored copper wire and strip off its end with the help of a wire stripper. Now solder the bare end. After that, solder the red wire to the collector terminal of the first 13009 power transistor. Now measure its length to the collector bus bar and cut it. After completing the stripping and flux placing, solder the other end of the red wire to the common collector bus bar. Similarly, connect the collector terminals of the remaining three power transistors to the same bus bar. Now guys, this one is based terminal this one is collector and this final one third one is the emitter and same goes for all the remaining three transistors now I'm going to use this 1.5 mm black copper wire for connections of the emitter terminals of the power transistors after placement of the flux and soldering of the end finally it's time to connect it to the emitter terminal of one of the power transistor with its other end soldered to the emitter bus bar. Now repeat the same process to the remaining two 13009 power transistors i.e. connecting their emitter terminals to the emitter bus bar together. And with that being done, the three transistors of 13009 will be connected in parallel except for their base. After completing the emitter bus bar soldering, the circuit looks somewhat like this. And now comes the base, this terminal, okay, this one and this one. These three are the base terminals of these three 13009 power transistors. Now for connecting of the base terminals of the power transistors, I'm going to use this 0.3 mm copper single strand wire. Now guys, after connecting the base terminals of the 13009 power transistors, cut off the remaining wire and start working on this 1351 power transistor. Now for the 1351 power transistor, this one is base, this one is collector and this one is emitter. Same as the 13009, but for connecting it to this 
this pack of transistor 13009 i will have to connect the emitter of 1351 which is i okay you see i this one emitter to the base common base of these three power transistors which is the white wire so emitter will be connected to this white wire after successful connection of the emitter terminal of 1351 transistor to the white wire which was the common base for 13009 power transistors cut off the collector and emitter bus bar length or shorten it up and with the leftover make another bus bar for the base now guys take another white wire and solder it to the base of 1351 power transistor and solder it to the newly made base bus bar now guys take a multi strand cable and cut it into three equal lengths remove the insulation place some flux and solder it completely and you will notice that when you solder it it becomes really hard i mean initially the strands were bendable easily but now they are really hard and strong. Strong. So these are the three legs that I have made for uh, the transistor and they are pretty strong. You can see the strands all soldered. Now solder all the three newly made legs for the big transistor to the respective base collector and emitter bus bars. After completing that it would look something like this.
so guys your hidden question for today is what was the maximum generated voltage in my previous video after placing of the MC it is going to look somewhat like this okay the circuit is uh, like inside the M seal and it is pretty strong. Now guys let's perform some actual high current tests on it. So here what you have is a 12 volts UPS battery. Now red as always is the positive and this one as you see is the positive. And red will be connected to the collector terminal which is uh, the middle one. So the collector has been connected. Now comes the emitter which is the negative add that yellow one for the base now i'm going to start with this 35 watts okay you see 35 watts uh, car headlamp bulb now black wire is going to represent negative so negative will be connected to the emitter and as you can see that the bulb is not lighting up because the base is not connected to the collector so let's touch it this middle one is the collector okay and hope that it close you see it is glowing pretty bright nice and heating negligible no heating to be specific now guys at the starting of this project I told you that I am going to keep the base current very low which is the best part for this circuit. So now I am going to turn on this pulp with the help of this 1 kilo ohm resistor. Okay. Well, let's hope that it glows. I am not sure. It is connected. Wow it is glowing. With the help of 1 kilo ohm resistor it is glowing. Actually the batteries are really discharged. Let's replace it with a 12 volts power supply. Now guys these are the two terminals coming out from the 12 volts power supply. That's the label 12 volts 5 amperes. So this bare wire is negative and white one is positive. So white one connected over here and that one over there. Now let's connect the base. Yeah. Now let's move on to this 100 watts car headlamp bulb. Okay. All this M seal is still on my hands. I have to remove it. Okay. You see, this one is glowing really dim because it needs more base current. And also the power supply is only 5 amperes. Let's short circuit. A little more bright but more current is needed of course. Uh, not at all hot. Let's try and run this 32 amperes DC motor. No base connected, no base current. Not turning. Oh, yeah, now it is working. Wow. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Let's try and stop it. But the good thing is that it is working really nice. You see, well, 
well obviously the torque is not much because I have connected only 5 amperes supply hi guys you're watching channel mr electron and this what you see is a 180 watts monochromatic loom solar panel as you can see that the open circuit voltage is around 21 volts dc and today in this video i'm going to test a few appliances to run them directly on 220 volts so for 220 volts output i'm going to use a computer ups and as you can see I have connected the output terminals of the solar panel directly to the UPS and the UPS is on so it's time to run few loads this is a 18 watts bulb LED bulb so this is the first load that I'm going to connect to the UPS and let's hope it works as you can see that it is glowing and uh, it is working even without uh, the battery the UPS has been connected directly to the solar panel and the bulb is glowing pretty good. Now comes a 100 watts incandescent bulb Philips. So let's try this one. As you can see that it is glowing but it is automatically turning off and also it is not glowing at full potential. It's very weak. So it's not able to run it. Now comes this fake 200 watts Parax IP66 LED panel okay so I'm going to connect this one they say that it is 200 watts but I hardly think so okay uh, so the panel has been connected to the output terminals of the UPS and as you can see that it is glowing although it seems like uh, that it is flickering but in actual it was not flickering it is just in the recording and as you already saw that since a hundred watts bulb could not glow so what is the possibility of a 200 watts so hence it was fake now comes this induction motor fan it is 70 watts and as you can see that it is working perfectly all right and uh, this indicates that the power rating output can be a max of around 70 watts and not more than that if we run it without a battery now guys i also wanted to try this 700 watts drill machine as well and uh, let's press the button as you can see that it is trying to run it but the power output from the UPS is not enough hi guys you are watching channel Mr. Electron and this what you see is a very dangerous high voltage power supply it is 35 watts and as you can see the maximum output voltage is going to be 23,000 volts danger to life and this is the input pin positive and negative which I am going to connect with the help of two jumper cables red denoting positive and black negative this is a small mobile charger 5 volts 2 amperes output this is what I'm going to use right now to excite it as you can see guys that the arc is really thin because the power supply or the input power that is activating the circuit is very less so I'm going to switch it to 12 volts 7 h So guys as you saw that this time the arc was really thick it was the high voltage arc category violet and green so this was working pretty good now let's experiment with this mercury lamp a dead one okay it is 250 watts and as you can see that it is glowing not bright enough but uh, because it's a fused one now let's do the same with dead CFL as you can see that it is glowing oh pretty bright now it is really bright so hit like if you liked it now this pulp is also a dead one with a lost or burned out fused filament okay so what I'm doing is I'm going high voltage and electrons are jumping from one terminal to the other and it's the plasma arc similar to a fire flame and when I turn it off you can see that the terminals are red hot 
and when I lower the voltage the plasma is violet in color okay so this is a small 3 volts DC motor and these are some 20,000 high voltage diodes okay so I'm going to use these diodes to create pure DC like half wave pure DC and connect it in series with the motor and I'm going to connect two diodes in parallel as you can see so that we can uh, get the maximum current flow okay <laughs> guys uh, let's do some rpm testing of the motor for its speed measurement so the maximum rpm for that motor was as high as 46000 rpm which was pretty good indeed Now guys this is a 24 volts 50 watts DC motor let's try this one and see how much rpm we get here so the speed is not even reducing it keeps on accelerating and accelerating that was really dangerous the problem is that the wire this wire is getting really hot maybe it's drawing huge amount of current and that too continuous because the voltage is very high but the current is not that high because of which the starting is very slow but it keeps on increasing to achieve the highest rpm equivalent to the voltage 23000 volts let's try once again Now guys this is a 220 volts blender motor. Well the speed was not much let's try reversing the diodes and hope that it works well this time. Whoa I reversed the diode and it seems like it is performing much better now. Wow. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Hit like and don't forget to share and subscribe for awesome future videos. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.